Hey y'all, I'm back and I have more of your paranormal stories that I'm so nervous to read. You guys heard me say that I needed more paranormal stories on the Reddit and you delivered. So I picked out three stories and I'm scared. This first story says, answering machine ghost. Trigger warning, mentions of suicide and domestic abuse. Hello all and court. First off, love your vibe and your channel. You're my want spoopy, but also laugh go-to. That's so nice. My name is Harmony and I have a story for you from about 15 years ago. I don't know exactly, just that my niece was a toddler at the time, so I kind of marked time that way, and the fact that it was before I got my precious little gremlin dog, Gadget. Rest in peace. <laughs> okay, well, we're off to a sad start. Anyways, enough rambling. I thought about making a TikTok, but my family follows me there, and there are a couple of things I'm not sure they would want me to mention. So, at the time of the story, I think I was about 12 or 13. We were living in a fixer-upper that I would later fall through the floor of into a thankfully cleanish and open basement. Okay. We were doing a weird sort of rent to own deal and our landlord was a really nice dude, super decent. And his whole deal was buying up old properties and fixing them or selling them to somebody who would fix them. I want to say our house was built in like 1910. It was really beautiful. Three bedrooms, a big kitchen, but like I said, it was a fixer-upper. Before we moved in, a random guy had apparently gotten in and canceled his life subscription. That's an insane way to put that. The story I'm going to tell about this place was when we had been there for a good while and we set up our home phone. Yes, I'm that old. Same. I don't know if you remember or even had one, but it was basically a wireless home phone with a base and answering machine. I was really into the show Ghost Hunters and I promise that's relevant. The house was set up with the living room at the front, dining room in the middle with a door between, and the kitchen at the back. So basically you couldn't hear much from the kitchen if you were in the living room. My mom had set up the voicemail message and was in the kitchen to call the machine to test it at the back of the house while I was in the living room, where I was supposed to listen to the message when she called and make sure it got through. Well, the phone rang and I fought the neurodivergent urge to always answer a ringing phone until the voicemail message came through. It was the usual, hi, you've reached blank. We can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. Satisfied that setting up the voicemail had worked, all she said was okay before hanging up. Here's where it gets wild. After she said okay, there was a man's voice. It was really raspy and strangled, very classic ghost, and said, help me. My brother was in the kitchen with mom and he knew very well that I was easily spooked as well as super into ghost hunters at the time, so I was sure he was screwing with me. I went to the kitchen and said, very funny Cameron, and explained what I heard. Well, apparently he had intended to mess with me, but his way of doing that was a Tarzan yell. We went to the living room and listened back to the message, at which point we realized that the voice was not only after mom spoke, but after she hung up. So you hear, mom, okay, click, help me. I really wish we had saved that voicemail because it's the most solid evidence of an experience I've had, though it's far from the only one. The rest aren't as interesting though. The best part of all of this, and the part I wasn't sure about making a TikTok with, was that my sister would bring my niece over for us to watch while she and her now ex-husband were working. My ex-brother, both extremely superstitious and, though I didn't realize at the time, abusive to my sister. We played the message for them and ex-brother-in-law literally broke our screen door tripping over himself to get the fuck out of the house. So that's it. Sorry if it was long and rambly. Usually the only time I'm writing like this is when I'm working on my book, so I'm really used to setting the scene, so to speak. Hope you enjoyed. I know you get so many of these and a lot of them are a lot more interesting. Wait, no, I thought this one was insane when I started reading it. Shush. I don't expect to see this on your channel, but I wanted to share anyways because it's my best ghost story by far. And it made it. No, I think that's absolutely terrifying that like, I don't even know, it was something so innocent like checking that the voicemail worked and then you just hear like, help me. And then you said that a guy had in your house. So I just feel like it's him. He's like, please help. I don't know. And I just don't like thinking about it. This next story says demon experience that tried to latch onto us. To start, I've always been interested in the paranormal and have been told numerous times that something about my energy draws in the supernatural. This is a side note, but I've also had absolutely vile and realistic nightmares since I was an actual child and have been told these dreams are during periods in my life that entities have attempted to attach to me. That's scary. I've always experienced supernatural things in my life, but this experience still makes me feel unsafe. When my fiance's cousin, we'll call him Jack, introduced the idea of a trip to the infamous Haunted Hill House in Mineral Wells, Texas, I was all for it. We left on a super sunny, super humid Southern summer day. On the ride to the Hill House, we were having a great time, listening to old music, telling stories and laughing. A few hours into the trip, we were given what I take as an omen of what was to come. As we were singing to the music, the driver of the car, Cody, screamed. And before we knew it, we were being practically pushed off the road by a semi-truck driver. 
Cody began to honk because maybe the driver didn't know that they had almost caused a fatal accident. The driver began to purposefully push us off the road again, flipping us off, spitting on the car, and throwing drinks at us. What? All of us were in absolute disbelief and fear-stricken, so we took the nearest exit leading us to a gas station to recuperate. We did not know at the time, but this was an omen of what was to come. I'm not ready for this. Once we arrived at the home, we began the guided tour to familiarize us with the grounds. We started in the safe room to sign forms, and as we were sitting, I kept catching a glimpse of someone poking their head out at the top of the stairs. It seemed like a child or something pretending to be a child. I told no one, thinking that I was just being paranoid. We began the tour in the living room, learning about the property as none of us wanted to do research prior to investigating, and while the guide was speaking, my back was facing the entrance door. I began to feel something lightly touch my hair and then something brush against my leg. I asked the guide if there was a spirit of a pet there, and he said no. Remember this. I then made my fiancé sit there and he began to feel it as well. The tour guide then informed us there are reports of a demon in this house named Toby, I assume named after the demon from Paranormal Activity. This is obviously not the real demon name, but I purposefully removed that from my memory. After this, we continued onto the tour. We were walking room to room, learning about its past. None of us really experienced anything in the remainder of the rooms on the first floor, other than me getting dizzy. We all just chalk that up to the fact that I pass out often and get dizzy multiple times a day. Once we finally made it to the second floor, we started learning about the child spirit that is rumored to reside there. It's up to discussion if it's an actual child or if it's Toby masquerading as a child, but after hearing the history of the house and the brief history of the young boy who I presumed was trapped in his own personal hell, I began to feel a need slash attachment to help or speak to the little boy. This was probably my first mistake. I opened myself up to helping an entity that could be a demon masquerading as a child. We then moved to Emily's room. When you walk into the room, you directly see a bed and a rocking horse that goes off when it's touched. When you look to the right, there's a longer room with unfinished walls. The ceiling was low in this room, so we all chose to sit on the bed. I was sitting at the corner edge of the bed, listening to the guide talk more about this demon that resides in the home. I began to feel something gently pull on the bottom of my jacket sleeve. At first, I thought it could be the child spirit, fearful of the guide speaking about the demon, but then the sensation of touch went from the bottom of my sleeve to the lower back, raising up slowly until it reached the back of my head. The guide, my fiance, and his cousins all could tell something was happening. I was frozen and then a gust of hot air brushed past my shoulder with force. I screamed and ran to the doorway, standing in it, about to absolutely wet myself. I would have already wet myself. I did not go back into that room for the rest of the night. I stood in the doorway for the remainder of the guide stories. He then said something that made me feel unsafe, stating that Toby, the demon, has been known for crawling on all fours, Imagine the black and white image of that old creepypasta creature that is crossing the road on all fours but its limbs are bent in the wrong direction. This is how Toby would move, but would rise to a stance in some instances. This is not even the bad part as I'm typing it, and I'm getting a chill on the back of my neck. I don't want to read anymore. After that, we moved to the seance room, the most insidious feeling space I have ever been in. This room is in a triangular form with like six chairs facing each other in the middle. I could not sit in the room for too long. I just kept feeling like I was being watched and I was unsafe. I was getting a sharp pain in the side of my head and pins and needle feeling in my hands. I also just kind of summed this up to the panic from what happened a moment ago, but I also did not walk into this room for the remainder of our time. Once the guide left, we started our own investigation. Small things would happen like a door slowly shutting on its own, targeted messaging while doing the estates method and being touched. I don't know what targeting methods while doing, I don't know what that means. Whatever. But once it hit 3 a.m., we decided to go to the little boy's room on the second floor. Jack began the estates method in the room. I'm not sure what that is. There were four of us in there. One was doing the, oh, it's Estes? I don't know. They spelled it differently pretty much every time. It's fine. One was sitting in a chair facing the open space in the back, and then my fiance and I had our backs against the wall facing Jack. Cody was asking questions. What are you? What are your intentions? And so on. We were getting some responses here and there, but the Estes method is a very finicky form of communication. It was not until Cody stated, none of this is real, and if it is, you must be the most cowardly demon to exist. Not even a minute later, this absolutely unexplainable noise came from the seance room. It was guttural, almost like a mixture of a screech and a hiss. No one moved. Jack was still doing the Estes method, so he did not hear any of it. The audio on the headphone was so loud we could hear it in the silence that overfilled the room. And then Jack said, did you like that? And Cody says, yeah, I did. If you're brave, do it again. And sure enough, the noise filled the house again, this time lower in tone. It felt like the entire house shook. 
I was done at that point. I enjoy ghost hunting and ghostly things, but I do not mess with demonic beings. I stood up and ran down to the safe room. All three of them followed after. I told them all I needed a break for a moment and they continued to investigate the upper floor with nothing happening. I was sitting in the safe room watching the cameras, holding the crucifix and listening to worship music. I am not a religious person, I never have been, but something about that noise shook my spirit. The three of them came downstairs after they did not find a source for the noise or any other experiences. We were getting ready to walk out and just leave when I was talked into going back upstairs to the little boy's room for one more last effort to prove that we were not having a shared hallucination. We sat in silence for a moment, trying to decide what to say, when Cody said, if you want us to leave, give us a sign. And once again, the entire house was silent, the world outside was silent. And then, if you want us to say, give us a sign, and then there were three uniformed knocks, sounding like it came from the seance room. Lastly, he said, if you want the girl to stay, give us a sign. This time, there were three uniformed bangs. The bang sounded like someone slamming a book or something flat on the floor with force three times, and it was coming from right outside the room. That was enough for all of us. We all headed downstairs, me going first, because the last thing I wanted was for something to touch me on my way out. Once in the safe room, I drank holy water and smeared myself with holy oil, as well as looked up a protection prayer, repeating it nonstop until we were in the car and off the property. As I've already stated, I've never been a religious person. I'm more spiritual. I believe there is something after death, but I also believe in evil. And as corny as it sounds, I truly believe that evil wanted to latch onto me or someone else in the group that night. I still have nightmares about this experience and will feel like I'm being watched when I wake up from them. I'll probably go to the other location soon to ghost hunt, but I will never step foot in that house again. The fact that you're even willing to like ghost hunt in general anymore is insane to me because if I ever had anything like that happen, fuck you, fuck you. I would never do it again. I'm so sorry. Okay, and this is the final story I'm going to read. It says, the man in the stairs who likes to watch me sleep and the little boy. Like, great. Hey y'all, my name is Zoe. I don't know why I decided to try and type this out at night as I've been watching scary stuff and I'm terrified, but I figured I would share some weird things that have happened in my house. I'm sorry if it gets long, I'm a chronic yapper and oversharer, but I love watching Courtney. I've been watching since the OG Victoria's Secret story time, and I thought maybe she and the rest of y'all would be interested. That's I'm very into the supernatural, though not always willingly. On my mom's side, her grandmother was from Romania and was very into spiritual stuff. My mom herself is very into scary things, horror movies, true crime, the usual, and has her own ghost stories and things that I could probably share. Ever since I was little, I've had weird experiences with ghosts, including my last house that was haunted by a little girl named Lucy. I posted a story about that years ago, but it's very bad. So if you'd like a better version, I can repost the story too. But we're not here for the past, we're here for the unfortunate current ghosts. My family and I moved into this house when I was 16. I'm now freshly 21. The house was seemingly fine. No weird things happening other than me feeling like I was being watched when I was home alone. That's about normal for me. I'm super paranoid and scared of everything, same. But things changed about two years ago. I was watching scary videos on YouTube, lots of Sam and Kobe reading paranormal stories, anything and everything. I honestly think anytime I bring lots of attention to scary stuff, it spikes up the energy in my house. My little stepsister, who was probably 13 and I was 19, were talking about ghosts and I asked if she thought the house was haunted. I purposely didn't give my own answer because I wanted to know what she thought. What she told me was somehow worse than what I imagined. My stepsister, who I'll call Haley, told me she thought it was haunted because when we first moved in, she saw something. It was late at night and she woke up to go to the bathroom opened her door, which is at the end of our long, narrow hallway. She froze, seeing a dark, tall figure standing at the other end by the stairs. Cat, my cats are fighting. She said she knew he was a man wearing 1920s clothes. He was just standing there. Not necessarily scary, but enough for a little girl to slam her door shut, jump into her bed and go back to sleep without using the bathroom. Luckily, she shared a bedroom with her brother, so she wasn't alone. She didn't tell anyone because she thought maybe it was a dream or her imagination. This terrified me because I hate the stairs in our house. Our house is split level, so the stairs lead to the front door and then down to the basement where my mom is. When you're coming up from the stairs, you have the kitchen right in front of you, the hallway of bedrooms on your left, and then the living room on your right. There's no avoiding that creepy dark staircase when you're going to the kitchen for late night snacks. I always got scared of the stairs, feeling like there was something lurking that I couldn't see. I named him Archie, short for Archibald. I don't have any reason for this as I'm not trying to contact ghosts, but I named our last house ghost, so might as well name him too, right? The next ghost, who I have not named, is one of the only things I've actually seen in this house and just thinking about it makes me feel icky. 
It was late at night and I was in my bed waiting for my cats to come to bed. I had to leave my door open for the cats to come in and out, so I looked out into the dark hallway waiting. Then I saw him. It was a boy, probably only eight or so, peeking around the corner from my step-sibling's room into mine. I froze, staring at it for what felt like forever, praying it was just my eyes messing with the dark. But I have lights on in my room at all times, which simply highlights the part of the hall that me and my step-sibling's rooms are in. And this thing was pitch black. It probably didn't last more than 30 seconds. Suddenly the boy shot back into my step-sibling's room. They weren't home. Their door was completely shut. And even then, the way the boy moved back would have sent him slamming into the door, as there was no wall space between our doors other than the corner itself. Honestly, I don't know how I slept after that. My step-sibling's room is awful. I can't explain it, but I hate going in there alone. It's now becoming my grandfather's room as my mom and my ex-stepdad are getting divorced, so I'm hoping this means I don't have to go in the room anymore. I never go in at night, and I hardly went in there unless Haley and her brother were over. It always felt off in comparison to the rest of the house. I'd rather go deal with the man in the stairs than whoever the hell is in there. The second to last story is short, but still scares me for soon to be obvious reasons. I was in my bed, probably watching YouTube or playing Sims, when I saw what looked like a child peeking up from the end of my bed. It was only for a second, but I quickly leaped to look down and was terrified. My room is a cluttered mess, and at the foot of my bed there's just piles and piles of blankets, pillows, squishmallows, and jackets. There's no possible way somebody would be able to hide down there, and certainly no way to be able to hide enough to peek up so that I only see their head. Also, nobody was home except for me. My older brother with autism goes to bed early and my mom whose room is in the basement. Part of me thought this was Lucy, my ghost from my old house, following us here. It's still possible, I was told she very well might follow me into my college years, but it also made sense as Haley was now the same age that I was when I first met Lucy. I was 13 and Haley was the same age when this happened. The last major story is about Archie again. Haley liked to come into my room in the morning to wake me up or climb into my bed and get some more sleep. I never minded this as she was always really nice and woke me up peacefully in comparison to our brother who liked to storm into my room and jump on me or her dad who would come in screaming. So she climbs into bed laying on top of me and looking at the door and she saw him. Archie was standing there in my doorway where she was just moments ago staring at us. She tried waking me up but apparently it was no use. She just crawled further into my bed and he went away. When she told me this I once again nearly shit myself Archie, I don't mind you being here, staring at me when I get cheese sticks at two in the morning, but do not watch me sleep. It's weird. Leave me alone. That's all that happened for a long time. I stopped watching scary stuff because I truly felt like whenever I watched it a lot, I would see things, hear things, lights would flicker, whatever else that I could try to rationalize in my head. However, I'm a little worried I'm jinxing myself by doing this. I've been watching lots of scary stuff again, and with that, I've been seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Like, I think I'll see my cat walking by, but when I look up, he's not there, and he's sleeping in a different room. Or I'll see my dog when she's locked out of my room because I'm doing something. Just random things that I try to say is my eyes playing tricks on me, or me being paranoid, but that's how this stuff started before. So I think it's time to take a break from the scary stories again, even though I don't want to. Hopefully this wasn't too long. I didn't proofread this, so hopefully my 1am brain made sense. I hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you want to hear about my childhood ghost stories, I have a couple, or the origins of Lucy, my ghost roomie, let me know and I'll try to get those out. Stay safe, be kind, and don't touch Ouija boards. No, so true. I genuinely feel like the little ghost boy that you're seeing lives in your step-sibling's room. I'm not sure if they're still living there or not because I know you said they were getting divorced, but I'm pretty sure that he lives in that room. And maybe he's a little evil because you said you feel weird going in there, but like, I feel like, I don't know, that makes sense for that to have been his room at some point in time. And Archie, no watching people sleep. That's all I have for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other paranormal stories you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. No rambling at the end of this. I gotta go check on Mr. Dexter, um, Kayla's cat that I'm currently cat sitting again. So I gotta go check on him. My boyfriend is already over there because I had to kick him out so I could film. So no rambling, but I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye.